Well, guys, I finished it a lot faster than I expected to, but I, I played the game and I have some strong thoughts, let me tell you what. Before anybody says it, yes, I played the game in its entirety because I try to give games a fair shake, even if they look a poopy to me. And this was a game that looked a poopy and it ended up being quite a poopy. It's moments like these where I'm amazed anybody is subscribed at all. I just used the word a poopy like three times in a video and this is my job and you're still watching. That's amazing. <laughs> so let's start this little review off right. I want to say that I finished the main story and put another handful of hours into the end game content. All told, it took me a little over 10 hours to get through the main story and that was with grinding out some side missions about halfway through. I played on the recommended normal default difficulty, not cranking anything too hard and I ran with the gear that was the best as I unlocked it. I'm saying this because I know sometimes people play these games and they artificially handicap themselves with limitations like playing on the hardest difficulty or maybe using lesser weapons and gear instead of the best stuff just because they hate themselves I guess I didn't do that I tried to play this like a normal player would that being said I think it's really important that we establish up front what this game is trying to be not what we want it to be this is a looter shooter live service game built around the end game and future seasons that will be coming this game is not about the narrative it's not about the main story that's not what they're focused on here and even if that's what we the fans wanted out of this it's not necessarily fair to hold this game to account for our false expectations. I do think it's fair to feel disappointed and frustrated that Rocksteady has made this game for various reasons that we'll go through in a few minutes, but I don't think it's fair to be like, oh, Suicide Squad is bad because it doesn't do this other thing I wanted it to do. That's not really fair. The game can still be good while not being what you wanted it to be. The problem is, the game is even bad at what it's trying to be. <laughs> As a live service game that has a major story component, the game fails miserably. The combat is painfully reductive, enemy variety is shockingly low, mission variability is also stunningly non-existent, there are technical issues such as dropped frames and broken objectives, and even in one case I came across a hard crash that closed the game completely and lost me about 15 minutes of progress. Paired with that, all of the server issues that have been going on whenever people try to play in co-op, and you get a game that feels significantly undercooked, which is all the more shocking when you consider that this game has been in development for at least seven years and it's in fact been nine years since the last game from this studio we're gonna get into specifics here in a second but i am just genuinely stunned that there is so little that this game actually has to present to the player as i mentioned earlier the game is about 10 hours long but this is 10 hours of story content with maybe three to four hours of unique gameplay content everything else is just repeated missions copy and pasted repeatedly and sometimes slightly altered to make it make sense within the context of the story at that time do you like escorting some sort of vehicle that rides along a specific track that's been clearly outlined while shooting big purple zits to keep it moving? Well, cool. You're going to do that seven times in 10 hours of gameplay as part of the main quest. Do you also like clearing enemies off of an objective by shooting purple zit covered vehicles? Well, cool. You're going to do that about nine times in 10 hours. Do you like fighting waves and waves of enemies until a timer runs out by shooting purple enemies, protecting giant glowing purple zits and purple glowing zits on vehicles? Well, cool. You're going to do that too, about 15 times. And that is the entire game. Side missions and main missions are identical often copy and paste it across the two. It's amazing. I seriously don't know what they've been doing for like seven years to end up with so little variety in terms of mission design, in terms of enemy variety, because there's basically grunts that shoot you up close and grunts that shoot you from far away, and then big brutes that all kind of blend together. That's it. Like that's all there is in terms of variety. I know people are going to be like, well, technically there are ones that are shielded too. Sure throw that in the mix but for a game built on keeping you engaged for hundreds of hours there is 
shockingly little here. And it honestly reaffirms my suspicion and speculation. To be clear, this is not being confirmed or anything, but there are a lot of weird things in Suicide Squad that make me feel as though this was either trapped in some sort of development hell or, and perhaps more possibly, it's a combination of these two, it was a game that was built as like a loot box looter shooter through and through and then it was scrapped and redesigned and reworked multiple times over so basically they developed two or three games over the course of the game's development and they ended up with this at the end examples of this are the ocean of crafting materials that you'll get while completing missions which to be fair is a telltale sign of looter shooters because you collect these things by completing various missions and then you use them to craft new weapons or to craft modifications for your weapons pretty standard but paired with this what seems to me to be a gigantic loot crate that flies in whenever you complete a major mission and it happens to glow the color of the rank of loot that you've unlocked like this to me straight up looks like an apex legends loot crate like that is exactly what this is and the only difference here is that you can't actually buy these boxes instead they are left only as rewards for the end of missions but i would bet you a pretty penny that at some point in the game's development and design these things were purchasable it's the same thing we saw with Gotham Knights where there was just a flood of multiple currencies and crafting materials that you would collect and it felt really out of place because then you just have like 35 different skins uh, that are available to you as a player and it felt like this should be harder to get it should be more difficult to get all these different skins but it's probably because that was built around some sort of monetization scheme that was walked back after like marvel's avengers flopped or after the debacle with battlefront 2 in 2017 whatever it was it seems like at some point there was a major shift in design and as a result a lot of work they had done had to be scrapped and reworked and reformed into a different shape and that ended up with the game looking like this but again that's all speculation i don't know for a fact that this was originally crafted around loot boxes and stuff like that but i'm just saying it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense when you consider that there's also a, a shocking lack of content here it seems like they wasted a lot of time in development or time that they spent developing on stuff ended up getting scrapped and thrown in the waste bin because they didn't think that it would be received particularly well. Beyond the bland, boring, and repetitive missions that you'll do time and time and time and time again, there are also only a handful of unique boss fights, specifically those against The Flash, Green Lantern, Superman, and Batman. And I know what you're thinking, Luke, what about the final boss fight? Surely you fight Brainiac in this game. Ho, 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 ho. We're going to talk about it in a second when I lift the spoiler free warning on the video and we get into spoilers. Just you wait. I've got thoughts there. Each one of these fights is at the very least unique. It's different from the waves of purple zitted enemies that we've seen before. And I generally liked these. I thought sometimes they went on a little bit too long. It felt like like they were overly spongy in terms of their health pools and it wasn't really about talent or skill with your weapons it was more about attrition and trying to survive long enough to deal enough damage passively with various abilities chucking grenades in the right spot so that they spawn on top of it things like that but all told i thought the flash fight was fine green lantern was kind of a fun gimmick fight superman was pretty cool and Batman I found to be remarkably underwhelming. But listen, here we're at the point where I can't really avoid showing you gameplay or spoilers because the game is so freaking short. If I only show you footage from the first like 25% of the game, it's just the tutorials and stuff. Like I, I can't do that like I would normally do for a game like this where I can cover most of the gameplay stuff in the first 10 hours of the game because the game is 40 hours long. In this case, it's so short that I kind of have to show you specifics in order to back up my points. So I'm just going to say that from here on out in this video, I'm lifting the spoiler free banner and I'm going to talk about the narrative and the gameplay freely. So nothing is safe now. You've probably seen the fight against Flash all over the internet because it's something that everybody's been sharing and it happens relatively early on. I know some people have complained that the Flash moves too quickly. And while I can understand the meme ability of that statement, I do think it can be a little overwhelming and frustrating when fighting him since he zips around the arena so quickly and there's so much happening on screen both by way of particle effects and also the extremely aggressive UI that it can be easy to see him get lost in the shuffle of things. All told I thought he was fine as an enemy and I was just honestly glad to be fighting something other than a glowing purple dude. Although I guess technically he has like purple eyes and is sort of glowing. It's messy. <laughs> 
That being said, I would rank this as probably one of the bottom two of the four core boss fights. I don't think it's very good, but it's better than more purple dudes, I guess. Green Lantern as a fight probably takes the second or first place for me. It's also fine. The arena is big and it's a little bit different with you having to shoot all of the green things that he's spawning in to break his will so that he becomes vulnerable for damage. It's a cool concept and I thought it worked pretty well. The Superman fight was fine. It dragged on a lot, but then again, I don't know how you do a boss fight against Superman without it feeling pretty contrived and limited intentionally. So I'm just going to chalk this one up to it's really hard to make a fight against Superman feel like you're fighting Superman, because if you were actually fighting Superman, you wouldn't stand a chance. So this is just being caught between a rock and a hard place. My stance would be that I didn't force them to put Superman in the game and make him fightable and beatable this way. They could have killed him off in a cutscene or something. Would have been underwhelming, sure, but at least then you would have dodged the bullet of awkward gameplay, but I get it. It's tough to make a boss fight against Superman. And then we come to the discussion of Batman and his boss fight. This fight starts off with a big gimmick sequence where you're going and mixing these toxins together, and then it transforms into a larger boss fight akin to the same things we did against Scarecrow back in the Arkham trilogy. I thought this was fine, and as far as set piece boss fights are concerned, I thought it was pretty and kind of cool. It does feel a little bit weird to just be unloading magazine after magazine after magazine into a gigantic bat standing in the distance, but you know what? I think it's fine. It's serviceable as far as these things are concerned. And I thought it was pretty cool, at least visually. But then we come to the post boss fight things. You know, the game is called Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It's part of the game. They make it very clear that you're going to be killing the Justice League members. That's kind of the point of the game. Even so, I was shocked at just honestly the tone and the approach that they took here. You see, after you finally defeat the Flash during the boss fight, there's a moment where a cutscene begins and the group discusses having respect for the recently departed Flash and trying to show proper honor and respect because even if they disagreed with things at the very least, you know, the Flash was trying to protect them from Brainiac initially and he didn't want to kill them or anything. It was only when he was infected with the brain rot of Brainiac that he succumbed to those motivations. However, there's a moment where Boomerang comes up to everybody, whips out his junk and starts peeing on the corpse of the Flash. I'm not making that up. Like that's what actually happens in the game. At the very least, it's irreverent. And I would already be like, ooh, that's kind of on the edge. I don't know how I feel about that. If I was writing this game, I'm like, I know it's the Suicide Squad and they're the bad guys, but like they're comic book bad guys. We don't think of them actually literally pissing on bodies. But like, I want you to think to yourself, how could we make this even worse? How could we take this awkward moment that maybe should have been cut because it's just tonally off? How do we take that and then make it even worse. What if we turn the whole thing into him pissing on the dead body while also having everybody compliment him on the size of his package? Well, sure, that would do it. That would make it worse. And that's what happens. And so the flash has expired. He saved our lives, yet we ended his. As honorable warriors, we will show proper respect to this fallen hero by show a little class man that holy shit congratulations made sense the gods have cursed you in every other way i mean harley quinn salutes his johnson as he pees on the flesh like i understand they're the bad guys i understand they're insane and they're murderous and all this i get that but when you're trying to tell a story sometimes it's not about like following it directly along like the path of of the logic of where we are. It's also about how it's going to make the audience feel. And in this case, it just makes the audience feel disrespected themselves. Like it's uncomfortable. It's not really funny. It's just bad and horrible. And naturally, people are not going to respond super well to it. You know what? It honestly like it's so stupid that this is what it reminds me of. It reminds me of that SNL skit 
where Dwayne the Rock Johnson goes on and he's playing like an evil scientist at the evil scientist convention. I don't know if we can show this without getting copyright struck, so I'll just describe it. But they go on and the whole point of the skit is that all these evil scientists are sharing their evil inventions. And one guy's like, oh, I created the evil shrink ray. Oh, this is an evil freeze ray. Oh, isn't that fun? Because it's like a comic book evil a supervillain type of thing. And then Dwayne The Rock Johnson as an evil scientist comes up and he's like, yeah, I made a robot that molests children. <laughs> and it's like, I guess that is like what an evil villain would do. But like, man, that's not like a fun evil thing. That's like a, just a bad evil thing. That's just gross and nasty, you know? And that's what this is. It's not fun comic book villain stuff. It's just tonally off. It's just bad and gross. That's what pissing on the flash is. And then turning it into a, an extended dick joke where everybody's like saluting his penis and the vast size of it. It's just freaking weird, dude. I, I, I don't know how anybody thought this was going to play well. Like, did they really expect us to watch this sequence and go, <laughs> that was funny because of comedy and penis size. I'm shocked this got released to the public. Honestly, I don't I don't even know who to blame for this. It's just stunning. But after the boss fights, of course, each of these characters dies and how Batman goes about dying is, let's just say, polarizing. Long story short, Lex Luthor gets a hold of him, uses him for an experiment to create this yellow kryptonite, which now makes Superman vulnerable because Wonder Woman tried to kill Superman with regular kryptonite, but it didn't work. So you need this super ultra heavy duty kryptonite that Luthor makes with Batman's help somehow and so now that you have that you no longer need batman so harley quinn takes it upon herself to execute batman point blank with a revolver and listen i understand thematically that harley quinn is doing this because she sees batman as responsible for killing her ex-boyfriend you know the joker although she says many times over that they were not on good terms and she's kind of glad to be free of the joker but still she blames batman for all of that and this is her kind of taking her revenge finally but it's done in a very abrupt and again, just tonally off sort of way. It, it's not done with much reverence or or respect where like they're sending off Batman in a, a way that's like true to Batman. Instead, it's Batman corrupted by Brainiac, basically daring her to do it. And then she does it and he just drops dead. It's really awful to see and witness. And initially like, over the last few weeks when people have been saying like, oh, did you hear the leaks? Did you hear that Batman dies in this horrible way and Harley does it? And uh, that's how they send off Kevin Conroy's version of, of Batman. I thought it was kind of a stretch to be upset about it. Honestly, I was like, the game's called Kill the Justice League. Like, what are you talking about? They're going to die and they're going to die at the hands of the Suicide Squad. Sure, it's going to happen. But I was going under the assumption, which was a dangerous assumption to make, that they were going to treat all of the Justice League members equally that they would treat Wonder Woman and Superman and Green Lantern and the Flash all with the same level of irreverence. That's what I thought they were going to do. Everybody dies in horrific ways because that's what the Suicide Squad does. But they don't actually do that. Wonder Woman gets to die as basically hero trying to save everybody by going back on her her like commitments to try and save everybody by killing this corrupted version of Superman and it doesn't end up working and she dies as a result. And it's honestly a cool moment where you like see she died trying to save everybody that is a hero send-off that's respectful to the character i get that they could have very easily done that with batman they could have written something in where after luther finishes with him getting whatever knowledge or whatever he needs to make the super ultra heavy duty kryptonite he could have done some sort of weird magic wizardry to break the brainwashing and bring Batman back. And there could have been a really cool moment where like Batman is tasked by Waller and everybody to help the Suicide Squad take down these other, you know, members of the Justice League within Brainiac's control. It could have been a really cool thing to make Batman work with Harley. That could have been awesome, but they don't do that. They have Harley shoot him in the face. They, do, they don't even come up with a way to send him off respectfully where like maybe Bruce Wayne starts to break free and he he says to them like 
I can't break free of this mind control. You have to do this now. You have to kill me. It's all you've got to do. And then at least it's like Batman is acknowledging and, and uh, you know, Wayne is, is acknowledging his position and he's giving himself up to protect everybody else. If he did that, if they had that dialogue, if they had all of that, I think it would make more sense. I think people would still be upset about it, but it at least would be understandable. But instead, it really feels like they just take the sick dog out back and then shoot him in the face. And I understand why people are upset now. I, I totally get it. And after seeing the special treatment they gave to Wonder Woman, but not to Batman, the character that made Rocksteady as a studio, I also feel pretty pissed about it. <laughs> Honestly, I like... I actually feel like, wow, you, the one that made your studio great, the character that did it, you treat him like this. Wow, okay, okay man. Like you, you could have written the story where he got the hero send off. You could have done that, but you didn't. You did it for Wonder Woman, who we've never seen before, who we barely hear from. But for Batman, you're like, no, no, treat him like that dog with rabies, old yeller or whatever. Like do that, do that. That sounds good. It's again, Baffling. But you know, it's also baffling. Brainiac. You know, I mentioned earlier that there was another boss fight, the final boss fight against Brainiac. That is in the game. It's the last thing you do sort of as an introduction to the end game. And I'm not joking. It is even more underwhelming than you might have thought. Again, like this game has been filled with repetitive content. It's been filled with the same reskins of missions 15 times over. So what with those low expectations would you expect is the lamest way they could finish this game out <laughs> how about with a reskin of the worst boss fight <laughs> yeah that's what they do <laughs> i am not joking brainiac takes the form of the flash and then runs around this weird hellish purple arena while you fight waves of enemies that he can summon to heal himself. And then you fight him with the same mechanics as in the original Flash fight. Like, I cannot make this up. It is even more underwhelming than I was expecting and my expectations were already rock bottom. You know, it's pretty rare for a game to just totally surprise me. I usually am able to like evaluate it pretty skeptically, critically, and come to a reasoned expectation of what the game is going to present me with and sometimes i'm surprised you know sometimes i'm a little surprised here or there but it's pretty rare for me to just be stunned and in this case i never thought the game was going to be this short i never thought that they were going to treat some members of the justice league really well and then others like actual rabid dogs and i never expected them to have sequences where you actually piss on members of the justice league and i also never expected them to have the final boss encounter a reskin of the worst boss fight from the beginning of the game. It is like if you were doing a masterclass on how to throw together a lame game quickly, this game would be chapter one through three, and then the book would end because it was a lazy reskin of the other book that already covered this. It's amazing to me. And as if all of this wasn't bad enough, there were also a bunch of technical issues. I played on the Xbox Series X and there were frame drops galore in the last half of the game. The front half of the game was relatively polished, which I can't help but notice is the same sequences that they put forward to press at all of the press events and also during the alpha play tests. But the further into the game you got and the more hectic combat encounters became, the worse the performance also became often with the frame rate dropping into the low to high 40s, dropping three, four, five frames at a time, making it pretty tough to tell what's going on when things got really hectic. There were also a bunch of issues where enemies wouldn't properly spawn in. So for example, there was a quest we were playing on stream where I needed to fight a certain number of waves of enemies in order to clear the way for the next objective to unlock, but the enemies never spawned in. In fact, it took about five minutes of running around in circles before they spawned in so that I could complete the objective and move on to the next one. And beyond broken objective markers, there's also issues where sometimes enemies glitch out and start glitching into the floor or behind invisible walls. There's also issues such as full on crashes where the game collapses under its own misery and you have to restart it losing 10 to 15 minutes of progress at a time. I haven't really heard anybody discuss these technical issues yet uh, in at least the work in progress reviews that I've seen go up for the game maybe it's just an xbox series x problem maybe it's across platforms i don't know but i'm just reporting to you what i've seen and that is that the game is markedly unpolished which i can't help but notice is a, a problem that 
would have been called out most likely if reviews were allowed to go up before the game launched. Again, it's a very bad look when the game is super short, lazily thrown together, lacks diverse content, has all of these major problems, technical issues, crashes, stuff like that, and you withhold reviews from the public before the pre-orders go live. That looks really bad because you know what it looks like? It sure looks like you knew the game wasn't going to be reviewed very well, so you tried to shove it out the door and get all that pre-order money before you could be called out for it. That's what it looks like to me. That's where I lose all sympathy, all respect. I understand amazingly talented artists and developers worked on this. But when you do that, that's called a scam. You are deceptively selling a product you know is not what the customer expects to them and withholding any protections or ability for them to understand what the product actually is before they get their hands on it and lose their money. That's deceptive, it's scummy, it's disgusting, and honestly, they should be ashamed of themselves. I don't care if this gets me blacklisted from Warner Brothers games or from Rocksteady in the future. I like, who cares? Who cares? This is ridiculous, this is unacceptable, and they should be ashamed because you know what? I think they knew damn well what they were doing. I really do. But let's round all of this out with a discussion of some of the other lackluster things, I found that the loot was generally pretty boring. Part of this is probably just luck of the draw because I happened to spawn some legendary items pretty early in the game. This was particularly lucky on my part because it meant that I didn't have to pay attention to loot for the first five or so hours of the game. So this is going to be relatively subjective, but all I can say is that I used basically two or three guns with my King Shark build throughout the entire runtime of the game, and I didn't really need to swap it around in this looter shooter other than those instances because I had the best stuff equipped by a lot. The graphics are also generally flat and lack the wow factor of Batman Arkham Knight. And this video by a friend of the channel, Nick Tech, makes it very, very clear just how far they've fallen. This is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and you compare it to Batman Arkham Knight from nine years ago. And I don't think it's even close. I mean, the art direction, the color, the vibrancy, the variability of environments, the detail work, everything is ridiculously impressive in Arkham Knight compared to the flatness presented, and that's not a butt joke, I swear, the flatness presented in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And if we bounce around, I mean, there's just like a flat gray look to everything in Suicide Squad. And when you compare it to the dark contrast and heavy rain effects and post-processing effects in Batman Arkham Knight, I mean, come on, come on. This is a decade ago, a decade ago. That's outrageous. Obama was president when this game came out. Look at this. This is insane. Like. I, I cannot even fathom how far they've fallen. And it really seems that it's because directly uh, of the push to live service and multiplayer stuff. Like that is what caused it. And when you look at things like this, I mean, just something as simple as the water effect. In both games, you can't swim, but look at the extra level of detail, reflective quality, and everything that they put in Bla Batman Arkham Knight that's not here in Suicide Squad. It's shocking. It's shocking. It's just stunning. It's really heartbreaking. Beyond the flat graphics, the world is extremely empty and boring Riddler challenges do very little to assuage the vapid and uninspired city that feels honestly like an alpha build of the original Watch Dogs map. Sure, there are some Superman statues here and there, but that's about the only thing that really makes it feel uniquely Metropolis. It is empty, boring, and feels woefully undeserving of being saved. But you know what? Because I don't want people to say that I'm just trying to hate for the sake of hating, and because I've been kind of warning people about this game for, at this point, like a year and a half, uh, going on two years, I want to say a couple of nice things. The voice acting is stunningly good. There are certain really awkward moments where I think the writing falls flat, such as pissing on an actual corpse, which is stunningly distasteful. But when the writing is good, the voice acting performances are fantastic, the motion capture is great, and the facial animations are literally industry leading. They are fantastic. The story's pacing in the first hour and a half or so is really, really well done. I also think that the museum sequence that's dedicated to Batman and the events of the Arkham Trilogy is far and away the best sequence that this game has to offer. It's a really cool reversal of those games where you're actually being hunted by Batman, and I can understand why they put this in the alpha playtest and in the preview events. That 
they invited media and press to. It really shows the strengths of Rocksteady in full force, and I think they should be proud of this sequence. At the very least, it's a seven minute sequence in this 10 hour game that they can be proud of. Okay, I said I was gonna be nice, I'm being sassy. <laughs> I need to calm down. <laughs> Seriously though, I did really like this. And I know it was supposed to be like a quick homage to Batman and then we move on to the rest of the game, but it honestly just made me sad and made me want to go back and play those games, which I think I'm going to do now that I've finished Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And frankly, I need something to wash the taste of this game out of my mouth. There is certainly an end game here and a lot of people have told me in my comment section, a lot of people have said it in Luke Stevens Live my second channel, which you should definitely go over and subscribe to links below. They've said it over there. They've said it over here and they've said, Luke, dearest Luke, this game is about the end game. It's a looter shooter. It's not about the story. The story is like the tutorial that gets you to the actual game. And they say that in the game's narrative, they straight up have characters tell you, this is where your real work begins. And you know, the stereotypical thing you hear in live service games, but I am approaching this as somebody that they're trying to convince to play the end game. And frankly, I've gotten through it and I'm just, I'm good. I'm done. I feel good. I don't need to play any more of this game. I'll try it again when season one drops in March. That's right. It's taking a month to come out, but in March they'll be dropping season one and the Joker as a playable character. So I'll give it a shot then and see if somehow they've improved enemy variety and the performance issues and stuff. Hopefully they have. But until then, I have zero reason to return to this game. The end game is just comprised of the same missions you did in the base game, copy and pasted indefinitely with some painfully reductive and repetitive loot systems at the core of them. There are some systems that are no doubt going to get fans of these types of games excited, such as the infinite level cap and the fact that at level 30, you unlock team talents, which are upgrades to your overall team that can give damage boosts and other things in the late game. That's something I'm sure some people are going to be very excited by, but frankly, after 10 hours with the game, I am sick and tired of it and I'm ready to move on. I was hoping that I would still be into the combat and into the missions and the boss fights would have been so cool that I'm like, ooh, I want to play through the story again, but this time totally as Harley Quinn. And then next time I'm going to go through the whole game as Boomerang and Deadshot and I'll just swap between them. So I basically get four runs of the game out of the story just because each of the characters play so differently. But really, it's just different like movement archetypes that all generally move roughly the same. And then you go and shoot guns at purple glowing zits on vehicles and brutes and that's it like there really is not more to this game and i am left just utterly befuddled at the lack of content the bizarre narrative choices and more than anything just the frustrating choice they made to go in this direction as a studio after a trilogy of some of the best open world adventure games ever made they choose to pivot into the live service multiplayer co-op shooter genre and blow all the goodwill that they had with their fans. It is shocking to see. It is utterly tragic. And I hope, you know, if you play the game and you have fun and you're looking at the end game grind and you're like, Ooh, that sounds awesome. Cool. I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy that you enjoy this. You know, for every person that hates like a burnt grilled cheese, there's somebody out there who also loves a burnt grilled cheese and they like it more when it's burned than when it's cooked properly more power to you my friend i'm glad somebody's getting some joy out of this burnt grilled cheese but for me this is one hell of a burnt grilled cheese that was also cooked with like not even real cheese it's like the scrapings from underneath a dishwasher and now i'm like expected to eat it and enjoy it but i'm like i had one bite i'm good fam i need to be done i don't know what the hell these analogies are i <laughs> <laughs> like what is going on i'm losing it this game has fried my brain i streamed basically my entire run of it and as you can tell my mind is slowly collapsing in on itself like a dying star because this game is actively affecting me and poisoning me maybe it, this is meta maybe brainiac is affecting me through the ones and zeros of this game i don't know but what i do know is i need to play something fun so you know what i'm gonna go play some Baldur's gate 3 pal world and maybe a little bit of like a dragon infinite wealth and have fun. Isn't that a novel concept? <laughs>
let me know if you're going to be trying Suicide Squad. My recommendation is that you don't. I think this is a game that's like worth trying on a Game Pass or something, or when it's like 10 to 15 bucks. Anything more than that, I find to be kind of aggressive and egregious. And when you pair it with like the aggressively priced skins, where like a single skin is $16 in this game, a whole bundle is like 30 plus dollars. I, I just think this is not a game you touch until it's either free to download and play the very short story or you get it on a stupid deep sale or borrow it from a friend. Anything else and I think you're just wasting money. But with that, thank you for watching. I love you all. If you enjoy watching me play games that are terrible, go subscribe to Luke Stevens Live, my second channel, <laughs> because I do that a lot. And let me know what other games you'd like to see me tackle in the next few months as we get some new releases coming. I do currently plan on playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and making that a focus of the main channel and the second channel. And there's a couple of others I'm interested in, but let me know what you think would be interesting to see covered in the next few months. But with all that said, thank you for watching. I love you all. Stay safe, protect your heart and your brain from stupid stuff like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.